All right, so this is going to be a Photoshop CS5 tutorial on how to create what I like to call the out of bounds effect. Um, so you'll start with an initial picture, like I've got this one, and then here's what it looks like at the end. We take part of the picture and convert it to what looks like sort of a, an actual photograph with a border and everything. And then we take part of the subject, which in this case is part of her feet, and we're going to have those hang out so that it seems as if she's coming out of the picture. And you can do this lots of different ways. There's really cool examples of these online if you search. The one that we're going to actually do together though is going to start with this picture of an elephant which is on my class jump site or you can google it and probably find this exact same elephant. Running elephant is its name. Uh, I'm going to zoom up and what I've decided is that I want part of this front leg and the elephant's mouth and trunk to be the things that hang out of the picture. So knowing that aforethought I need to go ahead and select that area. Now I will caution you, I would not select the entire elephant. If you know this back half is not going to get moved out of the picture, you don't really want to select it. You don't really want to select really much more than what's going to hang out just because it might get off. Um, they might not line up properly when we do some transforming later on. So you would choose your selection tool of choice, whatever that might be. For a lot of my students it is the quick selection tool. Now I will tell you this picture is not the most ideal candidate for quick selection because we have some issues with a rather noisy border or a rather noisy background uh, being that we've got some grass and stuff like that. So uh, I'm probably going to zoom up here and touch this up by removing some of this out with my polygon lasso. Um, that just seems to be the tool that I like to use to do most of this. So I am going to zoom up quickly. Hopefully this won't take all day and use my lasso on subtract mode to actually remove some of this stuff. So I'm just going to come in here um, and hopefully take care of this. So we'll get some of those out of there. And um, not sure how much of this trunk I need. Uh, and you could honestly have used the Polygon Lasso from the beginning if you wanted to. It really comes down to whatever your workflow is, whatever you feel most comfortable with. So I know I need to get rid of a lot of this, so I'm just going to keep subtracting out things that need to be subtracted. And um, then hopefully it'll look a lot better in the end. You will still have the option later on, because this will all be done using a mask. Um, so you could add these things back in later on, or subtract them later on using a brush on the mask. So it's no worries if your selection is not 100% perfect here at the beginning. So I'm knowing that, I'm going to kind of stop this and um, come back to touching it up later on. All right, so at least the trunk in that area looks better. Um, some of the other areas up here I probably need to work on, like that one for instance, um, is not so hot. Okay. Um, again, there's other areas, but we'll fix them later. So what we're going to do now is we're going to refine edge. We always want to refine edge when we have a selection and take a look at it. And always look at it on both black and white to see if you see any big areas of issue. I don't see any really big areas. Obviously, I am going to have to touch this mask up whenever I get ready to do this later on. Um, for sure, because there's some areas down here. But I'm not going to worry about that right now. Um, so... At this point, we are going to shoot this out. You have some big areas down here. We're going to shoot this out to a new layer with a layer mask. That's just the best way because then if we need to paint something back in later, no worries, we can do so. All right. You could technically go ahead and smooth the edges a little bit, but I honestly stay away from that because uh, sometimes it gets too fuzzy and it doesn't look real and you don't want to mess things up. Okay. So I'm going to actually take the smooth off and leave it alone and say okay. And what happens is you should have this. Now notice you do still have your background. Um, and then you've got this top part. And I'm just going to call this the out of bounds part. So this is the part that's hanging out. Our background layer on the back will always still remain our background. Um, but I'm going to unlock it so that later on if we need to do things to it, we can. So you just double click your background. It'll be a layer zero. I'm just going to call it BG for background. Um, now once we turn that on, we can't see the difference. So I am, you know, usually you're going to keep that turned off so you can see what's going on there. Uh, however, we now are going to need to work on this background. So, next thing here is I'm going to create my rectangular marquee selection of the area that I want to be in the photo part of this. So, I want his entire body to be in it, with the exception of part of his trunk. Oops, control D here to get rid of those ants. With the exception of part of his trunk. So, I'm going to come through here. Um, and that's not quite going to get it. I didn't get the top of his head, so let's try this again. 
Um, there we go. Something like that. Um, so at this point, I need to take this section and I want to put it on its own layer. So um, what you're going to do is you can right click it and you want to make a layer via copy. You can also go up to the menus, layer, new, layer via copy. It does the same thing. I know a lot of you like to right click. So uh, layer via copy. Now we actually have, if I turn this off, we have our little uh, rectangular or square area that will be our picture. Okay. Now while that area is selected, I'm going to just call this the photo part. And so I know that's what that box is. And the photo part is going to need to have a stroke and a drop shadow so it kind of looks more like a photo. So that's going to be down here on the FX button, your layer style button. I'm going to click it and press on stroke. Stroke is border, fancy word for border. Um, I will tell you that if you keep the border set on the default position, which is outside, it doesn't really look so so hot because it curves. See that? It curves the edges. We don't want to do that. So I always switch it to inside, which goes inside this area. And you can choose your own size. Doesn't matter to me. Um, and then we probably want it to be white because usually on photographs they have white trim around the edges. And then finally you're going to add a drop shadow. So you click here. Don't click in the checkbox because this doesn't switch. Actually click on the button on the words so this switches to drop shadows settings. You could modify any of this if you wanted to, if you needed your size bigger or your spread bigger or both, um, or to change the angle of the light. All right, so whatever you're happy with is cool. I'm going to press OK. And so here's what we've got. Essentially, we've already got what we need, which is this whole out of bounds feeling, but you would want to zoom up close and make sure that you don't have any areas of issue. Like I do have an area right there where there's some extra part of, it uh, looks like almost elephant there, um, on the edges. So you want to check those edges very carefully. And again, you're going to click on the layer mask. That's the black and white part. Up here it should say layer mask. You're going to grab your brush tool, which you can press B to do. You want to set it on a round brush. And I usually do not use a hard brush. So you're going to pull that back. Now my brush is like way too big. It's like 900 or so. So I'm going to size this puppy down. And then we paint on white. If there's areas we need to bring back in, we paint on in black on areas we need to get rid of. And I have some areas down here that need to go away. Remember black is sort of like an eraser without using an eraser. And I guess that part's actually okay. Just didn't look right to me. Um, and then up here. There we go. Okay, and so you just want to look at any of the overlapping areas and make sure that they look okay. All right, I think that's good. Now, there's kind of an extra step you can take here, and um, that is you can warp your photo part so it doesn't just look like a straight on box. So, to do that, you're going to need your transformation controls, which is Control T, that gives us those corner handles. Uh, the one that I think works best for this particular task. It's probably warp transform. So when you right click your transformations, you have all those options. But you know what? You can play around with lots of these. For instance, perspective, kind of fun. Um, you pull back the top part. Now my head doesn't line up with it, so I'd have to transform the head too. But you can see that you could do some sort of uh, interesting uh, effect where you're doing a perspective backwards. I'll hit cancel. Um, or you've even got distort, which you know, would allow you then to do some other sorts of things with it. But like I said, without matching up your ears, etc., those options just really aren't really great for this particular project. So I'm going to control T, right click and choose warp. That gives us that overlaid grid that looks like a tic-tac-toe board. And you can grab a hold of any solid side or any of these lines or any of these dots. And these dots are actually handles that allow you to curve lines. So for instance, I'm going to grab a hold of this one and curve it in. I'm, I'm holding that handle there, see, so I can go in or out. You probably want to be careful on these. Um, back in the back, it won't matter so much, but in the front area where we've got the overlapping, you have to be super careful because if I started to bend this in, see how my leg doesn't match up? So if you do that, you almost have to go up and make it match. All right, so just kind of fair warning, you got to really watch that. Um, same thing on the top. So I would kind of stay away from doing a whole lot of transforming on this top part. Um, but you know, it's certainly up to you. So if I hit OK, then I would have to take a look and make sure that it's all lining up OK. I think I did a pretty good job of lining those back up um, as I had it going. But if not, you could always touch up 
the mask if you needed to. Um, or, of course, change the warp. So there we go. It looks like he's just walking straight out of there. Now, kind of a step ahead, bonus material, if you will, is we could go ahead and add, say, a background behind all of this. So I'm going to create a brand new layer by pressing the Create a New Layer button on the Layers panel, and I'm going to pull it down behind the background. And then you can fill in this layer with just about any color. Um, you can click on Edit and Fill or use your paint bucket. You could even do a gradient if you wanted. I'm going to choose a color and I'm going to go in here and choose sort of a brown tone. So I don't know how great that is as far as brown goes, but it's going to just work for me. Um, and then you say, okay, it'll fill in that background. And we don't see it because right now we have a background. But because now that we have something behind it, we could play around with blending modes. So you can notice as I click there, there's multiply, color burn, um, and some of these which would not be good choices at all, but um, the lighter ones like screen, um, that lightens everything, uh, overlay, which kind of gives you an interesting look. So really that this would be totally up to you as to what you kind of thought looked cool and what worked well for you. You could alternatively, or in addition to, change the opacity, which then would allow this background layer to start showing through. Um, which would kind of fade out your background. So there's a lot of really neat looks you can get going here with this. Now in my example I showed you here, um, I blurred the background. Um, so let me show you. I'm going to hit the button so you can see it. Voila! See, it's blurred. Um, and the way to do that is you have to actually convert this background into a different kind of layer. So I'm going to turn the opacity back up. That kind of layer is called a smart layer. So I'm going to right click my background, oops, over here on the, where the words are. I'm going to right click my background and convert it to a smart object. And then notice it has a funny little icon in the corner by the thumbnail. So what you do is, once you've converted it to a smart object, you can add these filters and they'll be non-destructive, so they'll have masks. So I can click on filters and there's all kinds of cool stuff. There's artistic, um, there's blur, which is the one that I did on the other picture. So you could choose a blur and it would let you blur the background. I'm going to choose artistic just to be different here. So you can choose any of these. It actually takes you usually to a pre preview screen and you can see what kind of options. So like, um, here's a colored pencil, film grain, uh, paint daubs, poster edges, sponge. So you've got lots of different kinds of things. You can't see it on your screen, but there's also a bunch of buttons over here or sliders. So you can make those different. Um, so let's say I wanted to go with that sort of a thing here where it's kind of like painted on. All right, so we've got something like that going on. I'm going to press OK, and then what it does is see it does that to the background. See, isn't that kind of neat? So you can do that. Uh, if there were certain areas of the pictures you did not want that to apply to, you could have taken a black and painted that out on the smart filter. Um, that wouldn't be really anything I'd want to do on this one, but just so you can see. Um, say I wanted this part here to be back in focus like normal, then I can click on the mask of the smart filter, and then I can just see start painting it back in. Okay, again, I wouldn't want to do that on this one, but I just wanted you to see how that works. Okay, and if you change your mind, remember it is non-destructive. You can delete it. You can turn the eyeballs off, or you can of course double click and go back in and change these to something else. That like colored pencil, and that gives you a different look altogether. So lots of fun things there with regards to using smart filters, and that's kind of a new thing we haven't done yet, um, but lots of possibilities with that whenever you're doing this neat effect. Almost completely changes what your background really is and makes it more of a pattern. So uh, there you go. That's how to create the what I'm calling an out-of-bounds effect in Photoshop CS5.